Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode with Ken's Fishing. This afternoon it is raining and I don't know, we might still have a session. We'll see when Darren gets here, what he reckons. But yeah, I thought maybe I'd do a few traces for you guys. So stay tuned and I'll take you through them just now. Right guys, let's get to it. We're gonna do some traces for three or four of the fish I like to fish for, my favorite fish. Um, first one being the bream trace, bronze bream, which is very versatile as we saw the other night. Caught a couple of fish on that bronze bream trace. We're gonna do a shad trace and we're gonna do a cob trace. So guys, this is a bit of an overkill for the traces, but you know, we're fishing very rocky areas and we don't mind a bit of an overkill because the traces last longer. So for bronze bream, we want a short trace. Okay, I'm cutting a piece off. It's about 30 centimeters at the moment. It is gonna get shorter, but I just wanna first rig it up before I make it shorter. So, we have a small 2.0 size hook here. And guys, there's many 2.0 hooks and there's many 4.0 hooks that you can get. Um, whatever you can afford, grab those. I guarantee they're still gonna work. You're still gonna catch fish. All right, let's get to the bream trace first. Around your finger to make a loop and then you're gonna thread it over both the lines over both the lines very important so one two three four times with this leader is enough before you pull it tight remember to wet the line and then you pull it tight the reason why we wet the line is so that you know, it creates a weak spot if you don't wet the line with the heat and the tension. There we go, that's the first figure of eight. We slip this tag off. Not too short, I like to leave just a little bit there. Some guys nip it right at the end. Uh, I just feel safer this way. Okay, then we put one of these floaters on. Like so. And then I use these power swirls, guys. I like this helicopter movement story here. And I'll show you why. So you've got a bigger ring on the top, which will go to your main line. And then this spinning part of it, the helicopter one, is where we're gonna tie our bream trace onto. Okay, now we're gonna make this shorter. We're gonna make the hook snoot shorter, a lot shorter. About 15, 20 centimeters. Alright there. So there we have your bream trace. I'm actually gonna tie a sinker line on for you just to demonstrate further. So I'm using a thinner mono line. This is 20 pound. It's just old line that came off one of my reels that I didn't throw away. And just make sure that the line is not frayed, the old line that you're going to use. Here we have um, your bronze ring trace with the sinker. So, typical situation is it hits the C floor like that. And then this is free guys, this is free. And you've got this fluorocarbon leader line which is nice and stiff. It's gonna allow lots of movement on your bait. One last thing on the bronze beam trace. You've probably seen this in my videos. Uh, toothpick. And we put it onto the back of the hook here. And what this does is it not only extends the hook, but it also helps keep the prawn straight. Okay, because they do curl up in the water and you want to keep your prawn straight, you know, bait presentation. 
I'm gonna put this little piece of um, toothpick on there so it makes your hook a little bit longer and then you would thread your prawn bait on there to keep it nice and straight. Show you how you put the prawn on. You're using pink prawns. Nice prawns today. Just make a slit here at the back of the prawn. Thread the hook through. And then we're gonna put some cotton on. All set and all ready to go. Okay, so my next choice, again with the leader line, the fluorocarbon. This loop is going to be quite long. I like to make it at least 75 or 750 millimeters. Off. Okay, so it's longer now. Um, I've just demonstrated with a grapnel sinker here, just for the sake of demonstrating. Um, I actually, in fact, cut these off if I'm not going to use it as a grapnel. Because I like this function, the clip on function on these grapnel sinkers. Again, you don't have to do that, guys. This is just me doing it my way. Okay, so you want to you want to have your your sinker line longer as well because you want this to be able to release when it hits the water. I mean, when it hits the sand, the bottom of the ocean. So it hits the bottom of the ocean and then comes apart. Now, if it's too short, it's not going to do that. And if it's too short, you're not going to be able to clip your sinker onto this end of the, the dingo. And there's it running away. Okay. And that's my cop trace. Next trace, we're gonna do a rock hard trace. I'm using a number 40 hook again. And again I'm gonna take a piece of fluorocarbon leader here. I'm tying a figure of eight. So it's not going to be as long as the cob trace. 
This one I'm gonna make about 700. Okay guys, this is what's been working for me personally. It's not necessarily the way of making these traces. Right, so hooks look right there. It's about 700 long. I'm showing you a cost effective way of making traces. There's no need to get new line and just make sure the line is not damaged. Okay, line is. Tit, pull it tight. Tag it. Sorry. Again, I like to use a, a, a dingle dangle trace for rock hard not necessarily needed so this one we can make the same length as the hook again the same theory you want it to be able to go through the air together when you're casting but i'm using a dingle so i'll make it longer and attach the dingle to the end there okay so that's my rock hard trace cool Last but definitely not the least, our shad trace. And this is one of my favorite fish to catch when they're on the bite. Uh, my dad also loves catching shelf, shad. <laughs> shelf. Um, we're gonna use a 4-0 needle point hook this time around. And we need a bit of trace wire. Reason for trace wire, as we know they have razor sharp teeth shad. Shad Taylor Elf. There's lots of name for, for Shad. We call it Shad. Um, other places call it Taylor. I know some of the guys like to call the big ones Taylor or Blue Shad. Okay, let's get on with it. So we have a piece of trace wire and we need a pliers for this one. You're gonna see I've had this pliers for many years. Don't mind the rust, it still works. So we thread this trace wire through the hook. Now I know the bullies, they have seen them do this. They hold this with their fingers and they bind it neatly onto the Me, I still need the pliers to hold the one end like so. And then you bind this as neat as neatly as you can. Okay, I'm showing you the shared trace from scratch because it's easy just to go and buy them. It's probably cheaper because it saves you time, but you know, if you wanna make your own and when you need to, need to make your own at least, you know how. Okay, so this gets binded nice and tight and neat, as neat as possible. That should do it. Okay, so that's what we have. And then you can snip the end of this. Also, again, as tightly and as neatly as possible. The shed, as we know, minimum size is 30 centimeters. And we use full sardine most of the time for these. So for full sardine is around about What's that, 20 centimeters? So we're gonna make this tag end or hook snoot rather. I'm just gonna use my scissors, it's sharp, sharp enough. Um, yeah, 20 centimeters. And then we're using a single power swivel, just a single one for the end, yeah. Again, I'll use my old pliers here, my Dala one that does the job. And you just wind this on as best you can and as neatly as possible. I'm just gonna use my scissors here. There we go. Right, so there we have our hook and swivel attached to the trace wire. Next, we're gonna take some mono leader. 
a figure of eight. Okay, I'm gonna use 20 pounds for my hook snook here. I'm gonna make a figure of eight. Tag it off. Okay, some guys like to leave this pretty long. I'm gonna leave mine at about 700. 700 millimeters. You wanna take a float cork. Okay, sometimes these holes are free. Sometimes you just need to help them along. I'm gonna use a toothpick here yeah? and put it through. Make sure that it's free for the line to go through. Easy as that. All right, and then we're gonna attach a three-way swivel. Again, a power swivel. Not to the helicopter section, but straight to the one opposite the main line ring. Okay, and then the last would be your sinker line. Here we have it. And here's your shad trace. And there's our four traces that we made this afternoon. The cob trace. I don't think I mentioned, guys, you don't have to do this to your grapnels, please. You can get sinker clips and you can you can get use those sinker clips rather but this is just me and the way i like to do it thanks for watching guys this afternoon you know um as i said from the beginning this is not the only way or the way of doing the traces it's just i thought i'd show you uh, some of my favorite traces and how i rig them up i have been successful with them so guys, thank you very much for watching and if you like that video, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, Lani, subscribe man, it helps. We're almost at a thousand subs. Let's get to that number so I can continue bringing you great content. Nah, no, kidding. Uh, but yeah, no, <clears throat> subscribe please. I'll still bring you excellent content either way, as best I can in any case. Um, we might still go for a throw this afternoon, so maybe I'll see you in the water just now. But thanks again for watching guys, and please subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.